Welcome to Electron Online. In this example, we're pulling a sled across, presumably, the snow. And uh, it has a mass of 16 kilograms. The force applied is 24 newtons. We're not given the kinetic coefficient of friction. Matter of fact, that's what we're asking for. We start with the, sl the sled at rest, velocity equals zero initially. And after we've pulled the sled eight meters with a constant force of 24 newtons, the sled has reached a speed of two meters per second. From that information, can we figure out what the coefficient of kinetic friction is? The answer is yes. Let's use the energy equation. We can say that energy initial equals energy final. And so any work put into the system plus any initial potential energy plus any initial kinetic energy should equal any final potential energy plus any final kinetic energy plus any energy lost because of friction. And in this case, energy will be lost because we do assume there's going to be friction. Yes, we do put work into the system because while the sled is sliding across the snow, there's a force being applied during the entire time. So work put into the system is going to be force applied times distance, plus potential energy initial, since it's on the ground, it has no height, that's zero potential energy, and since the initial velocity is zero, there's also no initial kinetic energy. As far as the potential energy final, again, it's zero because no height was gained, but it does have velocity at the end, so there is some final kinetic energy, so that would be plus one half mv final squared, plus the energy lost, which is the friction force multiplied times the distance. The distance, again, being eight meters. How do you find the friction force? Well, first, what we realize is that there's some weight pushing down on the ground, mg. There's a normal force pushing back, which is equal to the weight of the sled, mg. And therefore, there's a friction force for friction, which is equal to the normal force times mu, which in this case is mg mu. And of course, we talk about mu sub k because the sled is moving. All right, let's go ahead and put all that in. So we have force times distance. Force times distance is equal to one half mv final squared plus the friction force, which is mg mu sub k times d. We're trying to find mu. We're looking for mu sub k here. So what we're going to do is we move this across, turn the equation around. So we have mg mu sub k times d is equal to, on the other side we have f times d, minus when we bring the kinetic energy across, one half mv final squared. And so finally, let me move over this way, so we have a little bit more room. We we'll solve for mu sub k. Mu sub k is equal to the right side of the equation, which is the force times distance minus the final kinetic energy, mv final squared, divided by the other coefficients here, which is mgd. And now we're ready to plug in some numbers to see what we end up with. The force, 24 newtons. The displacement, 8 meters. Minus 1 half times the mass, which is 16, times velocity final squared, 2 squared, divided by the mass, which is 16, times g, 9.8, times d, which is 8. So simplifying that a little bit, 8 times 24, uh, let's see here, that's uh, 192, 192, that's 2, 3, that's yes, minus 4 divided by 2 is 2, minus times 16, which is 32, divided by uh, 16 times 9.8 times 8, which is equal to 160, divided by 16 times 9.8 times 8, and of course, the 16 and the 160 cancel out, that's 10 divided by 8. And I think now we'll just go ahead and grab a calculator. So 10 divided by 9.8 divided by 8 equals, we are getting a number between 0 and 1, that's always a good sign. And the coefficient of kinetic friction, mu sub k, is equal to 0.128. And there we go. That's how we do that.